As space travel heats up, more, deeper missions into space are being considered. Getting probes to Jupiter and rovers to its moons is a big focus at NASA. Though even today, we are still using rather similar methods of propulsion in space as at the start of the space age, just more refined. Most newer types of space propulsion either rely on massive scientific breakthroughs to be feasible, such as antimatter propulsion, or suffer from terribly low thrust capabilities, such as solar sails. Finding a propulsion technique that is efficient and can create substantial thrust over a long period of time in space has been the goal of many different companies. The answer to this lies in radioactive isotopes. The concept of a fission-powered space engine is not a new one. However, a big problem with fission propulsion is the amount of heat that is unable to produce thrust. The solution is to turn the fuel, plutonium carbide, into a fine dust, hence the name dusty plasma engine. By having the fuel grains be less than one micron wide, the probability of escaping without collision with another atom is nearly 100%. Because of this, almost all the friction is negated, solving the problem of waste heat. The exhaust speeds of the engine can reach an upper limit of 5% the speed of light, or 15,000 kilometers per second. That massive speed, combined with the atomic mass of the resulting element isotopes, contributes to generate substantial thrust. To get a better understanding, let's compare ion thrusters to dusty plasma engines. Now ion thrusters can produce a maximum of 5 newtons of thrust and have a specific impulse of about 10,000 seconds. The exhaust speed of the xenon being expelled is at around 40 kilometers per second. A dusty plasma fragment engine can produce nearly 10 times the thrust at around 45 newtons. The specific impulse is also much larger at around 100,000 seconds. The upper limit of the exhaust speeds is 15,000 kilometers per second, but we will go with a more realistic estimate of around 6,000 kilometers per second. It is quite clear that with today's technologies, dusty plasma fragment engines are the more powerful and efficient choice though even 10 times the thrust of an ion engine is not very much. However, there is a plan to add an afterburner of sorts, which is expected to create 450 newtons of thrust, but drops the specific impulse by a factor of 10. With that in mind, a trip from Earth to Jupiter and back would only require about 600 kilograms of nuclear fuel and 90,000 kilograms of hydrogen. The radioactive powder is slowly siphoned into the fission reactor where it meets a plasma ball held in place by electromagnetic confinement coils. This allows the reaction to be sustained and controlled over a long period of time. The particles that do escape the confinement coils are slingshotted out at a few percent the speed of light. However, this engine also produces the electricity for the ship. It does this by separating some electrons from the fission products, ripping them off as they travel out of the engine. At this point, an afterburner can be added to inject hydrogen into the exhaust stream to further increase thrust capabilities. Now, being powered on radioactive material, there certainly are some downsides. First and foremost, a large concern is the amount of radioactive material that will be left in Earth's atmosphere when the engine is activated. This has been extensively measured, and around 700 grams of radioactive propellant are spent within 10 Earth radii, or 38,000 kilometers of Earth. Of that 700 grams of propellant, only about 31% of that will reach Earth's atmosphere. Still, if several of these rockets are launched per year, that can certainly add up. A possible fix would be to start the fission reactor outside of the 38,000 kilometer area, but that could sacrifice precious acceleration time, so there is a trade-off. While there certainly are downsides to dusty plasma rocket engines, the benefits to space travel would be massive. Deeper and faster missions into space would be possible, and research of the outer planets in our solar system would become much more feasible. It certainly will be interesting to see where the future of space travel will lead us, even if it does not involve this type of engine. Until then, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider subscribing, and I will see you all soon with a brand new video.